One day, the tide will run out for today's energy sources. Fossil fuels are being depleted. Their very use is imperiling our world with pollution and contributing to the greenhouse effect. Other energy options face serious limitations as well. What if humanity could create and use the same type of energy source as that of the sun? This is the goal of the Fusion Research Program, funded by the United States Department of Energy at a number of laboratories and universities across the nation. The Princeton Plasma Physics Laboratory is located in Plainsboro, New Jersey, on Princeton University's 800-acre James Forrestal campus. Here, visitors see the continuity and the exciting potential of fusion research. In 1951, distinguished Princeton astrophysicist Lyman Spitzer conceived of a method for producing useful energy from a very hot gas called plasma. If a plasma made of the light element hydrogen is hot enough, nuclei within the plasma will collide with enough force to combine and form a nucleus of helium. During this process, large amounts of energy will be released. This is the same process that produces the light and heat of the sun and stars. What man-made material could possibly contain this plasma many millions of degrees hot? To solve this problem, scientists have devised magnetic bottles in which magnetic fields, not metal walls, hold the plasma in place. The experimental fusion machines at Princeton have been built using the tokamak design in which the plasma is contained in a donut-shaped magnetic chamber. With the growing success of donut-shaped magnetic fusion devices, the Princeton Plasma Physics Laboratory has developed into the leading fusion research lab in the United States. Hundreds of the world's outstanding plasma scientists and engineers have worked and studied here. A strong support staff has also developed, including machinists, electronics specialists, vacuum technicians, and computer experts. The laboratory has more than 800 employees. The fusion research supported here by the Department of Energy has spawned a number of smaller research programs that will be important to America's technology future. These programs include the development of soft X-ray lasers, shown here, work on the plasma etching of electronic circuitry, and the study of spacecraft glow. Research on magnetic fields of the solar system is also being conducted. The Princeton Plasma Physics Laboratory is the home of one of the country's most advanced smaller tokamaks, the Princeton Beta Experiment Modified, or PBXM, which is an important test bed for fundamental improvements in the tokamak concept. The centerpiece of the lab's work is the TFTR, the Tokamak Fusion Test Reactor, one of the largest, most successful tokamak experiments in the world. The TFTR has produced record central plasma temperatures in excess of 300 million degrees, more than 20 times the temperature at the center of the sun. TFTR's giant electromagnetic coils create the donut-shaped magnetic bottle essential for plasma confinement. The magnetic fields are 100,000 times stronger than the Earth's magnetic field at the equator. During the past 30 years, there's been a one million-fold improvement in the quality of plasma confinement as measured by the product of plasma temperature, density, and heat confinement time. TFTR is now only a factor of two away from scientific break-even where the fusion energy produced by the plasma will equal the energy input required to keep the plasma hot. 30 years is a relatively short time for the creation of a major new branch of science and technology. During this period, far-sighted legislators have provided more than $5 billion for plasma fusion research around the United States. They have taken a realistic view of America's energy needs, recognizing that practical fusion would require a long-term commitment of time and resources. Other advanced industrial nations, such as Japan, the Soviet Union, and the European community, are also making large-scale commitments to fusion research. The formation and heating of the TFTR plasma requires precise timing in the operation of magnet coils, auxiliary heating, and a host of other systems. The plasma experiments are monitored by over 35 diagnostic systems attached to the TFTR. These devices relay information to the Central Instrumentation Control and Data Acquisition System. During a typical experiment, the amount of information collected is equivalent to 7,500 pages of the Encyclopedia Britannica. The experiments on TFTR are conducted every 10 minutes. Each experiment lasts for only a few seconds, but during that time, the machine uses as much electricity as a city of 500,000. The energy is drawn at a much lower power level from the utility lines, is accumulated in two large motor generators, and then is pulsed at high power into the TFTR device. 
Fusion differs from the atomic fission used in today's nuclear power plants. In fission, energy is released by the splitting of heavy atoms. In fusion, energy is released when light atoms are fused together. In the case of a fusion reactor, less than one-tenth of an ounce of nuclear fuel is in the reactor chamber at any time. So with fusion energy, there can be no Chernobyl-like runaway events. The main byproduct of fusion is ordinary helium gas. There is incidental radioactivity produced by neutrons striking the walls of the reactor. But careful material selection will minimize problems of handling and ultimate disposal of waste. To date, TFTR has used only deuterium to fuel its fusion reactions. To attain actual break-even conditions, a combination of deuterium and tritium will be needed. The TFTR experimental program calls for tritium, a radioactive isotope of hydrogen, to be introduced during the next few years. The effective and safe use of tritium will be an important part of TFTR research. The United States Department of Energy has invested approximately $300 million at Princeton for the design and construction of an extensive tritium handling and delivery system for systems related to the burning of deuterium tritium plasmas and for the training of TFTR staff. Fusion experts agree that the next step in the nation's fusion program should be the compact ignition tokamak a national project with broad participation by U.S. laboratories and universities. The mission of CIT is to go an important step beyond TFTR, achieving ignition by the year 2000. The ignition point is reached when a burning plasma produces enough fusion power to maintain its temperature without the need for any auxiliary power input. An ignited plasma is like a campfire. Energy is required to start it. But once ignition occurs, the reaction is self-sustaining as long as fuel is available. Because the CIT has been designed as an extension of the existing Princeton TFTR facility, this new machine will use many of the laboratory's existing support systems, including power supplies, computer services, and tritium handling equipment. The resultant savings are estimated to be over $100 million. CIT is an essential link between tokamaks of the TFTR generation and the International Thermonuclear Experimental Reactor, now being designed collaboratively by a world consortium of American, Soviet, Japanese, and European scientists. Like the current TFTR project, CIT will be environmentally safe. Experts at the Idaho National Engineering Laboratory recently submitted to the Department of Energy the findings of a three-year study of all possible CIT environmental effects. They concluded that no significant impact on the surrounding community would be caused by the construction of CIT at the laboratory, nor by its operation and eventual decommissioning. The major advances of the fusion program have come as a result of decades of hard work by the national community of fusion researchers, men and women, not only at Princeton, but at laboratories in Oak Ridge, Livermore, Los Alamos, and at General Atomics, MIT, and dozens of American universities, as well as in private industry and government. This culmination of the joint research effort in the United States and in the world will be the realization of fusion as a safe and environmentally acceptable long-term energy resource.